Okay, let's listen to the pitch then again. Slightly flat. Best to leave it a couple of beats sharp, really. But I'm well aware of the bass string problem, so um, normally I go a couple of beats sharp of concert, but in this case I'm not going to because they're all bass strings. I'm going to check it with the bass. Well, we're going to raise the bass strings anyway. I just have to face the risk of that. That's about one beat sharp. Right, let's set off. Okay, in fact, the octaves are flat as well, so not only is the, are the thirds well out, which is a basic for tuning, but the octaves, that's a flat octave too. So when you're tuning, I'm just tuning the unisons here. There's a sort of maximum purity you can get the unison. Now that seems to be the maximum purity for that one. Now just dropping down an octave. The way I tune is different from the average. I start off with an octave C. Now having done the octave C, we then tune the G. We've downloaded a, a simple tuning program here for you to see, just for something visual to look at. If you're going to use uh, one of those to tune your piano, it won't be very accurate. I recommend uh, tuning by ear, really. But it can be a useful guide. For instance, we can see how flat it is at different points. That should be sharp. Up there it should be sharp. And down here it should be slightly flat because you stretch the octaves downwards a bit and upwards a bit. But uh, it's not as it should be yet. Now I just do the octave G. I stay in the middle range. That's where you should keep your tuning between F sharp and C is the range that I tune between for the temperament. Having done the G, now we, in the next one round the clock, if you've got a key wheel, you could download chord and key wheel and see what order we go in. And then it's D. And that's not tuned, all fifths are tuned slightly narrow. And we tune the A. Again, slightly narrow. Next note around the clock is an E. If you're a musician, we're increasing one sharp at a time, so it's C with no, no accidentals, G with one sharp, D with two, A with three, and now E with four. We're looking for about 10 beats a second there. It's actually, well, you think, how can you count 10 a second? It's something you, you grow accustomed to over the years as to how many, how it should sound. And then B, five sharp. Now I've got another check here, which is roughly seven. By the way, when you're tuning, the stability of the tuning is more important than the incredible accuracy in terms of whether it's seven or plus, seven plus or seven minus. Getting the tuning pin so that it's set properly is something you learn over the years. But briefly, comes with hitting the note hard and descending down onto the pitch rather than going up. Now onto the sharp keys, F sharp, six sharps, we always talk about sharps from tuners and don't talk about flats at all. And those should be a nice progression. Again, slightly narrowed the fifth. Now along the way I'm finding the odd pin that needs, re needs setting. This is just a question of just giving it a light tap because the they're, they're pins, well, since it's been restrung, these pins haven't been changed. So um, they need, they need set, some of them are a bit loose. They need setting. 
bit, and it's just a question of tapping it very gently in, not all the way in, just slightly to roughen up the wood and get it to set better. Nice and tight now. Now we're on to the C sharp, more than halfway around the wheel. As I mentioned before, this is not the orthodox order of tuning. It's something I picked up from the first tuner that taught me. It has its logical reasons for doing it this way. I won't go into that now, but I see no reason to change. But if you're learning to tune, you might want to tune this to the normal temperament, which is F to F and all the notes in between. Also, using a temperament strip is a good idea if you're a beginner. Then we're on to the G sharp. So we should have a nice progression of thirds. first time I've tuned this piano and there's a lot of tuning to correct so while you're tuning every single turning every single pin the stability is more important than the accuracy I'm not saying I'm not trying to be accurate but stability that it stays in tune and really with the Bluthners no excuse because Bluthners are incredibly stable pianos okay on to C sharp now the last of the sharps A sharp and lastly on to the F Back to the naturals, and uh, hopefully F and B flat to F and C to F is not beating too much. Now, as I say, the important thing here is is the stability, accuracy, obviously, but number one stability. Stability. You're turning practically every tuning pin, so you're going to have difficulty if you don't really go for stability. And then uh, once you've got it stable, the next tuning in six months or so would be the more accurate or slightly more accurate. This is pretty accurate. It's just that you're going mainly for stability here. Okay, we've done the whole temperament area here from F sharp to C and uh, nice progressions of thirds. Getting faster as you go up an accurate fourths and fifths. So now we go from C sharp, we've gone right to the top end of the piano. As, as this is a corrective tuning, and it's quite a lot of flat notes, it's best to go slight, as sharp as your ear will allow you. So it's beating slightly. And anyway, you, you stretch the treble a bit. So it's at the fifth in tune, octave slightly sharp. Now we've gone right up to the top end and we're going to go right down the bass and normally the octaves to be pure as possible, fourth and fifth, as pure as possible with the fourth beating a bit stronger than the fifth. Okay. Now this, this is the bass section, we've done the tenor section and I'm, I'm in fear and trembling that we might break a bass string because the strings are very high tensile there uh, and as they get older they get tighter and tighter and these are actually original strings I can tell that because the tuning pins are the smallest that you can get the tuning lever fits onto them so amazing that they've lasted so long but this is the point at which they get really tense they need a slight pitch raise so the chances of breaking one of those strings uh, well here we go I'm going to go downwards first I didn't feel too bad, so I'm rather hopeful. I'll leave the video on because you might get that rare, ch rare chance of a bass string breaking on a bluegrass. Hopefully not. I've got the client standing behind me also hoping that none of them will break. So down first. One thing about high tensile strings is they sound really nice. That's why they do it. And if you change them, you often don't get such a good tone. So far, so good. It's a nervous time. It's only a very slight pitch raise, but... I'm, I'm actually reasonably optimistic because 
this piano wasn't tuned too long ago. I might have to eat my words. We're okay so far. It's anywhere along the line here they can break. And also, a lot of pianos, it's the top, the top bass area. And this one, it could be anywhere. We do do a lot of bass restringing on Bluton as well, the whole piano. If you've got a Bluton and one or two of your strings are missing, it's a good sign that they might break. None of the treble strings are broken, which is a good sign. They're not broken in the life of the instrument. These tuning pins are slightly on the loose side, but not enough to have to set them. on the video. They're not feeling too tight actually. I'm concentrating more on setting the pin than getting a fine unison. tuning will be, as I mentioned before, tuning every string. Now we're not out of the woods yet because the bass strings and individual ones can break too. Is that usually when it's not been tuned for a long time. If it's not been tuned for a long time, it's a good idea to lubricate along here. That's, that helps it not to get, not to break. Even so, with gluteners, you can never be sure. If there's one string broken already, it's best not to try and pitch raise. We're nearly there. These bass bottom ones don't normally break. Looks as though we've made it. I just check the pit, check the tuning. Tune. to redo that F. So that's a Bluthner style um, 7 and uh, 
It's 1898. Uh, you, if you watch the whole video, you'll have seen how we assessed the piano and then changed the hammers, and then there's a lot of work just uh, regulating it afterwards. Let's have a listen to it. <laughs> singing treble. Treble's a bit weak at the moment still because the hammers need playing in. Eh? A nice rich bass sound. So that's a, a start changing the hammers on the blute and regulating very quite a bit of work there so I hope you found that useful and thank you very much for listening.